Report. And here with me on set to discuss, Kevin Barron, executive editor of Defense One. Kevin, thank you for coming back to the Saturday show. So, th is this just a beef between Putin and Prigozhin, or is this something that could um, pardon, pardon the analogy here, blow up into a larger internal conflict for Vladimir Putin with the Russian people. Well, it already is an internal conflict now. I mean, it, this is a civil war in the making, or, or at least an, an uprising, a coup. There's no honor among thieves, right? And Prigozhin for years has been the biggest thug of all in Russia. He, you know, don't forget, he is a he is a mercenary of mercenaries with an army that has committed atrocities across continents. And so uh, Putin has long been in bed with him and relied on him purposely and needfully to wage the war in Ukraine. Uh, and oddly enough, uh, Prigozhin has been complaining for a long time about not getting what he needs. Neither does the Russian military. The, you know, the war has exposed how bad the military has, is from, you know, the weapons they have to the stockpiles they have. So you have, you know, already a, a pretty bad guy complaining that he's not getting what he needs, not getting what he wants, making a power play. And you already have, whether, whether he had intended to overthrow Putin or not, Putin from the very beginning, his response has been, kill Prigozhin, kill Wagner, stop this uh, group from coming. So now you have a battle of wills between the Russian armed forces and mercenaries. So er, um, um, earlier, um, earlier today, Prigozhin said that if he doesn't get the meeting that he's demanding with the top Russian officials, that he will march on to Moscow. Is that a real threat or is it bluster? Uh, we'll see soon enough. I think we'll see maybe by the end of the day. But it looks like things are heading north. Uh, you know, they're going from city to city. Uh, and again, what the ultimate goal is, if Prigozhin thinks he's going to sit in the Kremlin and rule Russia, I don't think anybody had that in mind. Uh, so for the, a lot of analysts have been saying from the beginning, th this guy's digging his own grave. There's no way he's got the forces to defeat the Russian army. He doesn't have the political will. He doesn't have the following. Well, he doesn't, he doesn't have the forces, but he's got the money. Yeah. That, that, what, that is something that makes this mercenary force unlike any maybe we have seen in a very long well, time. And in addition, you know, the Chechen president has come out, or leader of, of, the, of that or region has come out saying that they will support Putin and Putin's forces. And, you know, the, he, that guy has always been a squirrely actor looking. He's, you know, he's picked which side he thinks is going to win and where he's going to you know, make his bed. So what does this rebellion reveal really about Putin and his whole his grip on power in Russia? Well, if, if you thought the, the Russian military was, you know, a disaster beforehand, now you know it. And, you know, the, the entire security of Russia relying upon a private military mercenary force like this with no ethics, no morals, you know, absolute atrocities. This is not a normal Western private military, uh, you know, organization. Um, your whole your whole country is based on that. So this has all been teetering for a long time. I think, you know, if you, when you ask Russia experts, they don't know how this was all going to end, how the Ukraine is going to end, whether Putin, uh, you know, is toppled internally or not, because people would say, well, if even if even if he is, we don't know who would replace him. We don't know who the next guy would be. And I don't think anybody thought it would be this guy. That it would, it would yeah. be Prigozhin. Okay, so in the hours, hours after the re this rebellion started, um, the Minister of Defense of Ukraine, the official Twitter account, tweeted out, we are watching. Talk about how, how will this Im impact Russia's war on Ukraine? Well, you know, the Ukrainians, they often use the meme, they say they're eating popcorn, like, right. you know, that, that it's so easy to defeat the Russians, they're just eating popcorn, watching Russian losses. And I heard on the way in a uh, Ukrainian official saying, we're running out of popcorn. Like, this is so good for them to watch. It, but it's, it may not be good, because Prigozhin is just as, as vicious and ruthless against Ukrainians as Putin has been. So unless Prigozhin has in his mind, we don't want to wage this war anymore. Uh, my guys don't want to do this. Um, and, you know, it's not just about we don't have the equipment to do it. We don't want to do it. Right. Anything short of that, it's still bad news for Ukraine. It's maybe good news short term. Uh, Russia now has a, something else occupying its time right. in, a, in a big way. And Ukraine, I would assume, is going to try to take advantage of that somehow. They, they could, you know, accelerate this counteroffensive and take well, I was about to answer. They, they want. Right. They've already started yeah. the, their, their counteroffensive. So to expand on that point, with Russia's attention turned elsewhere. Can do American officials believe that Russia, I'm sorry, that Ukraine yeah. can take advantage of this? Uh, we don't know. The Americans are being super quiet, right? The Pentagon also goes quiet in these times. And for, for the, the whole life of the war, the U.S. has tried to keep the U.S. military out of the war, out of the narrative of the picture. This is a Europe fight. This is not the United States versus Russia. So I'm not surprised the Pentagon is keeping quiet and watching and, and NATO mm -hmm. is watching. Uh, but again, I think it would, I'm sure intelligence will be directing the Ukrainians to take advantage of what they can. But, you know, we're, we're not sure, at least 
out here in studio right. of who's in charge of the Russian army at the time right now. Uh, are, and will these soldiers listen? That's what's going on. There's a public propaganda battle over who's got command. Mm -hmm. And, you know, already you have forces who, who are you know, not the most loyal in every case. Uh, real fast, because we're running out of time. What will you be watching as the day goes on um, as we watch what's happening in Russia? I'm watching the ground movements of Wagner forces heading north. I'm watching to see um, what Russian officials stay in Moscow or leave. There are rumors mm. that Medvedev is gone and Shoigu, we don't know where he is. And uh, there have been planes tracked, being tracked of uh, people trying to guess if Putin is may, trying to make a run for it to one of these border states. I, don't, I doubt that. I, right. you know, I don't think that'll happen. Uh, but that's what I would keep an eye on.